Hi, it's Karen with RT Systems. Back again for five more minutes of the 878 and 578 and things to know about them. In the other video, we saw how to put some memory channels in and put them into zones so the radio has them to use. Now let's look at a few other things that are necessary for the radio to accept the file. First of all, down at the bottom of the screen, radio ID lists. We have a default in there, which is perfectly acceptable. If you don't have your uh, DMR ID yet, that's what this is for. If you do, replace the number and replace either your call sign or your name right here so it has it. The radio will not be happy with the file if you send it with these fields blank. And it's an interesting feature of this radio. Lots and lots and lots and lots of radio IDs, but that's what this is. For you using your own radio, you only need one. This is not your contact list. This is you using the radio. Next, let's go to settings and radio menu settings. Lots and lots of pages of things that this radio does. I am not here to explain them all to you, not in this five minute video. What we're going to look at, power on message, I can change this to custom character and fill in two lines here. Default startup channel, pick your zone. Pick your channel from that zone. Pick your zone. Pick your channel from that zone. Then every time you start up the radio, it goes back to those two channels for you, top and bottom. A couple I can tell you to stay away from. Let's go to other. Weather alerts. Yes, it's a wonderful feature. But if you want to use the top of the, and bottom of the radio for two different repeaters that you want to listen to, as soon as you turn on weather alerts, the bottom portion of the radio or the B portion of the radio, I guess it could be at the top, depending on how you have it set, becomes the weather channel. And right here, I've told it which of the weather channels I want it to be. Sub-channel mode, if you uncheck that box, you'll have one display on the radio, not two. Then auto repeater on this tab. Repeater mode, if you check repeater mode, the work mode options take over. One that you probably want to address is this key function. Look at all these different functions you can put on the keys. Set it up so that it works the way you want it to. And APRS. There's some common settings for APRS. Fixed location uses the latitude and the longitude here. If you're moving around and you want to use GPS, that's on the Power GPS tab, and you turn your GPS on. And then we're going to be working in analog, call sign. And this is kind of different, too. The TX frequency is what it's going to use for APRS. So set your options up here the way you want them. Then we're going to close this and apply changes and close. And if you want to do APRS, it has to be turned on in every channel you want it in. So we have APRS report, and it's set to analog for all of these. So it doesn't matter which of these channels I'm on, APRS is going on in the background. And the APRS report goes out at the start of the transmission, starter, end of transmission, 
an APRS channel. I had it filled in to number one on that other screen. So it's number one here. And this is easily done. Let's say I wanted it to be digital. Control C, shift down arrow, control V, and they're digital. Let's turn it back to analog. Control C, shift down arrow, control V. Now I want this to be start of transmission. Control C, shift down arrow, control V. And those are set up and ready to go. Sure does make that easy. That's way over to the right next to the channels. I can see the channels. I can see the frequencies. I just come over here and customize those settings. So a little more about your radio. We'll cover a few more details next time. And remember, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. 73s.